Wow, what a surprisingly negative opinion on the Sonic game Sonic Frontiers, from what has generally been quite a positive reaction to the Sonic game Sonic Frontiers. I'm sure this video is full of reasonable criticisms, and points aren't completely over-exaggerated to the point that they do not even line up with the source material. Oh no, who could have seen that coming? The video was full of unreasonable criticisms and over-exaggerated points that did not even line up with the source material being criticised. Oh well, at least this video isn't the third in a series of videos based on Sonic Frontiers and debasing it based on unreasonable criticisms and over-exaggerated points that do not line up with the source material. Oh no, this video is the third in a series of Sonic Frontiers videos that all debase the game based off of the same unreasonable criticisms and over-exaggerated points that do not even line up with the source material. I sure hope this guy does not have any easily identifiable biases. Oh no. But everyone right now is saying Sonic Frontiers is good now, all of a sudden. Stop mistaking newfound optimism for definitive opinion. And it has no clue what it's doing. Despite having a template laid out before it to exactly replicate and they refuse to do it. Oh yeah, a little game called Mario Bowser's Fury. This isn't the point in the video where you immediately dismiss this and everything Switch Force might be saying, then I don't know what to tell you, we're not watching the same video. Sonic and Mario have fundamentally always had different play styles, and telling Sonic to exactly replicate Mario's most recent 3D outing is just inane, and shows your bias almost immediately. It's like saying Mario Strikers Battle League was shit, they should have just done what FIFA 22 did. Sonic Frontiers is a vomit of rail grinds and boost pads and under 60 second stages. While I actually agree that the levels shouldn't be short, I've not heard anyone say 60 seconds or under, so I don't really know where you've got that figure from. More to the point, Sonic Team and Izuka have already said repeatedly that the focus of this game is the open world element, so kind of a moot point in the end. They show off Green Hill Zone and everyone goes bananas. <laughs> I don't really know where you got this one from, dude, because, like, the biggest criticism I've seen of the game thus far is the reuse of levels. So, yeah, people went bananas, but, like, out of rage and indignation that we're being force-fed Green Hill Zone again. I really don't know where you've got this information from. Who are you talking to? Even given 30 cyber stages, we have under an hour of gameplay. These cyber stages are the bait and switch to make you think that this Sonic game has everything you want. If someone is baited into buying Sonic Frontiers based on the cyber stages alone, then I am going to be very surprised considering that the entire PR run, again, has been completely based around the open world gameplay. Sonic Frontiers' central mechanic is drawing circles. So, not only are we conflating core mechanics for character abilities, but we're also reducing those character abilities down to a fraction of what we're actually seeing them do. So, one of Sonic's abilities in this game is that he creates a trail of cyber energy behind him that has a variety of applications, such as drawing circles around enemies and triggering special attacks, and also activating puzzles, interacting with the open world, and a bunch more of the stuff that we've probably not even seen yet. Oh, Mario Odyssey is a bad game because the core mechanic is jumping. That's crazy. How boring. You guys are wasting $60 on a jumping game. That's crazy. And I don't care who says it's enjoyable, who says it feels good, who says that it's a great evolution, it is bad. Yeah, actually, fuck everyone saying that this was a really good choice and a really good addition to the game. You know what? We'll just say that it's bad. Because I said so. Alright, release the video. And instead of putting in fun, creative enemies, they put in a Mighty Mug Child Baby. Don't know why that's the main character they show off in the story trailer. Oh, they put in folded paper in this game. Why do they show that off in the story trailer? And then you're fighting geometric objects. Imagine if in Mario Bowser's Fury, instead of fighting Koopas and Goombas and giant birds with beaks and all sorts of other creatures, you fought shapes. Yeah, I mean, it'd be crazy if they put, like, shape enemies in Bowser's Fury. I can't think of a single iconic Mario enemy that is just a literal shape. That's insane, dude. That's crazy because this is the same Sonic Frontiers that I saw in person in Los Angeles, and this is the same Sonic Frontiers I saw shown off by IGN when it looked like a disaster. Except that's patently not true, Zach, because the demo you played in LA was 30 minutes of the open world, and the demo here, while shorter in length, has far more on offer. There's the cyber world stages, there's interactions with other characters, and there's just generally a lot more going on in the open world. It may be the same game, but it's certainly not in the same state that you last played it. But those environments are still a random smorgasbord of grind rails and boost pads thrown aimlessly around. Zach, mate, what do you want from this game? 
One minute you're saying that the open world is empty and has nothing in, and the next minute you're saying that the environments have too many things scattered uselessly across everywhere. It's all well and good criticising the placement of these objects, but your experience of the game is 30 minutes of gameplay on an older version of Sonic Frontiers, as confirmed by the team themselves, and 30 seconds of gameplay of the worlds that you've not even played, as revealed in the Gamescom trailer. That's not enough to form a solid opinion, certainly not as definitive as you are presenting in this video. There aren't the little challenges that capture fun bits of Sonic. I know that the point of this video is to try and convince me and thereby other people to not spend $60 on Sonic Frontiers, but all you've managed to convince me of right now is that you didn't actually play the game at LA. During Summer of Games, one of the biggest selling points for the demo was that it was an open world Sonic environment full of challenges, puzzles, and obstacles to be solved with Sonic skill set. It's obvious you didn't realize it during this video, but those cyberspace stages are supposed to be those small pockets of Sonic fun scattered across the open world, and they fit the description perfectly. They're supposed to be short, bite-sized chunks that don't take away from the core gameplay, which is the open zone environments. Trying to really just convince you that this is what you loved. Yeah, I do think there's an element of this in the trailers, to be fair, and I do think there's an element of this in how Sonic Team presented it. I will never forgive them for the stunt they pulled with Sonic Forces and taking Chaos out in a cutscene, but... I don't think it's nearly as bad as you're making it out to be. I think they've tried to make it very clear from the beginning that Sonic Frontiers is a different direction for the series. So that's kind of a moot point as well. I would love to be wrong. You know, Zach, I have this crazy feeling that you actually don't want to be wrong about this. I have this really, really bizarre, odd feeling that you would love nothing more than to be correct and to tell people, I told you so, if Sonic Frontiers ends up being bad. I don't know, it's just a feeling I get. It's just a weird sixth sense that I get about this, you know? That this game is running the same open zone style throughout. And Sega has said we don't understand it, fans don't get it, and now magically they do? No, it's actually pretty simple, Zach. So basically what happened is uh, every piece of information that we received prior to Gamescom uh, was complete dog shit. The game looked terrible, it looked really bad, and the fact of the matter was that Sega wasn't being very upfront with information about the game with that either, so we can only speculate and speculate for the worse. And now that they've finally released a trailer that looks well put together and shows off some really exciting pieces of gameplay, optimism is currently on a new high for Sonic Frontiers. Hope that helps. Two months before the game comes out, still has graphical issues and camera control problems, something that plagued the original reveal of the game back on IGN when the gameplay debuted. Pop in galore because it literally is random objects popped into a world. I actually agree with this issue. Pop ins shouldn't be a problem for Sonic Frontiers, but unfortunately, they apparently poorly optimized the game, so. Yeah, that kind of sucks. With regards to the camera controls, though, um, I think that probably says more about the player more than anything because the camera controls are completely customizable in terms of camera speed and camera distance. So if your gameplay is shit because of the camera, I am inclined to believe at this point that that's probably a you problem. They did not look at Mario, Bowser's Fury, and say, hmm, we could do something similar. Now, you can argue that Sonic is a different type of game than Mario. It's a different moveset, it's a different speed. But I've even seen people say, in their positive impressions, that Sonic has to slow down to approach these different challenges. Now, these aren't interesting, engaging, named challenges like we saw throughout Mario, utilizing different parts of his moves and utilizing all sorts of other elements from past and present Mario games to formulate a new creative idea taking advantage of a semi-open world, if you will, an open zone done by Nintendo. Instead, it's literally just, uh, I don't know, go in a circle around this loop, go in a circle around this grind rail, and then uh, go in a circle six times around this giant geometric object because that's how you beat it. So first and foremost, Mario and Sonic are just fundamentally different games and there's nothing to argue about it. Second of all, can't help but notice that your description of some of Mario's challenges were really vague and non-specific, whereas you went almost too detailed with the Sonic ones to the point that you almost reduced them down to really basic points. But don't worry, I've got you covered. See, in Mario 64, there's this really boring challenge within the first level, Bob on Battlefield. It's just an open field with not very much going on inside of it. And one of the challenges, would you believe it, is that you've got to just ground pound on one post three times, and that's it, you get a star for it. What's the point in that? 
You know, in Mario Odyssey, there are challenges where you get rewarded if you just throw your hat onto three objects. It's really crazy. And I, honestly, it's just so boring, isn't it? Now, it goes without saying that Mario Odyssey is always going to be a better game compared to Sonic Frontiers because it just is a perfect game. But I just really wanted to showcase your weird comparison bias. It's like that fucking flexi glasses video where it's like, your glasses versus flexi glasses. And it's like, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing with your comparisons here. You're like oversimplifying Sonic's things. And then you're keeping Mario's really vague, but saying they're really good at the same time. Like, dude, come on. Like, if you're going to be biased, make it less obvious. Look, I'll always give credit where credit's due for creativity. And they tried something different and it just didn't work. This is just my opinion, but this is a really bad game. It's just my opinion, but if you spend $60 on this game, it's a complete waste. It's definitively a shit game, but no, that's just my opinion though, please, no, 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 it's just my opinion. I'll always give credit where credit's due, but like, there's no credit to be given here, but that's just my opinion, it's just my opinion, guys. If you spend $60 on this game, you've wasted your money, but that's just my opinion, don't worry. And I really, really do not like anything that I've seen of this game, and I think it is going to be a disaster. I wouldn't have guessed. I wouldn't have guessed that you didn't like this game, Switch Force. I wouldn't have guessed that you'd think it's a disaster. I wouldn't have guessed that you think this sack. I would not have guessed at all. I really do. There's been a lot of Sonic disasters in the past. Sonic's had a rough transition to 3D. This isn't new information. Everyone knows Sonic's had a rough past. Why on earth? Earth, did you put this in the script? This is the one thing that everyone takes the piss out of Nintendo YouTubers for. For being that, that, oh, Sonic's had a rough transition to 3D. Oh, you know, Sonic's had a rocky history. He's had a bit of a rough past. Like, dude, come on. We're just getting close to the release date now, and people want to believe because they've loved Sonic from when they were young. I don't really think you spent any time amongst any of the Sonic fanbase at all because those guys change their opinions like every fucking Wednesday on whether or not Sonic Heroes was a good game. The fact that so many people are excited for Sonic Frontiers right now shows how encouraged people are given the Gamescom trailer. You make it sound like fans are just absolutely screaming, raving, bouncing from the walls, wanting Sonic Frontiers in their hands right now, and they're already declaring it a perfect game, which just simply isn't the case. If you listen to any thoughts upon the game, they'll probably turn around and say, yeah, I sure wish I'll be able to play as other characters, or wow, yeah, I sure wish they used more original levels, but the general consensus is that the game looks promising and it's a step in the right fucking direction. No one is touting it as the best thing since sliced bread, which you seem convinced that people have been doing. Sega has not said, oh, there's more deeper gameplay later on. They've said, you don't understand what makes this good. AKA, we don't know. People don't like it. Uh. I mean, they haven't really, have they? They've not gone, me no, no. They've gone, you've kind of got to experience it for yourself. So that's just not true. <laughs> I'd love to be wrong. I'd love for this game to come out and blow us away, but I hate the idea that people will get swept up into the typical YouTube pattern where as a game approaches release, creators get all excited and fans get all hyped and they want to believe that everything is the greatest thing ever because saying it's the greatest thing ever is the good thing to do on Twitter these days. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Um, sure. So Zach, let's make it abundantly clear you don't want to be wrong about this. There is literally no doubt in my mind that you want to be the most correct person anyone has ever seen. You want the I told you so card in your back pocket at all times so that if the game bombs and gets a solid 60 to 50 or Metacritic, you can turn around and tell people, ha ha, I told you so, ha 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 ha, you should have bought Bowser's Fury instead, ha 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 ha, ho ho ho, I told you so. Nobody is getting swept up in shit. There is plenty of naysayers and skeptics over Sonic Frontiers right now. There is not a single person on YouTube right now that is going, Sonic Frontiers is a perfect game, be all and end all. There is literally nothing wrong with it. And they absolutely aren't saying that it's the greatest thing in the world because Twitter's doing it. What part of Twitter are you looking at to be getting those types of messages? Because my God, I would love to be in that positive atmosphere. Is directed to saving you money from a game that looks antiquated, out of date, and completely, absolutely clueless. Sonic Frontiers is about drawing circles around geometric objects, and that's all you need to know. Super Mario Odyssey is a game about running, jumping, and occasionally throwing your hat on things. I don't know about you, Zach, but I'm really tired of hearing the thoughts of someone who has just antiquated opinions, 
has out of date experience with the game and seems absolutely unabashedly clueless. How many Sonic games have we wished to be the bold new turn for the franchise? And what was the actual bold turn for the franchise? Sonic Mania, a game that went back. And why do you think the cyber stages that they're now throwing at you to lure you in are like that? What do you mean? What do you... What do you mean? What do... Where is the comparison between the cyber stages and Sonic Mania? I, I am clearly missing something. I'm missing some divine type of Nintendo Switch insight that I've clearly missed on the gene lottery because I don't understand how you are making that comparison. Wow! I mean, first and foremost, ignoring the fact that 3D Sonic and Classic Sonic are two fundamentally different things and they really aren't for everyone, okay? Sonic Mania was great. I loved Sonic Mania. But what I love more is moving forward, doing something new, not looking back on the fucking retro classic games and going, wow, they sure were great. We should do that again. My God. Dreary content, my friend. This whole video just reads as like the most stereotypical AI generated Nintendo YouTuber thought piece on a new Sonic game. It hits every single mark. And I don't know why I'm surprised. But they have no idea how to take this game into the next generation, into a new era, into a modern gameplay style. Sorry, mate, and you do? Your first comparison was to say they should have just done what Bowser's Fury did. And they may never. Sonic may just not lend itself to that type of progression. But Sonic Frontiers, it ain't it. And I just wanted to get that off my chest and let you know. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry to put it to you so bluntly, but it had to be said. And, and hopefully you can understand that I'm just trying to be authentic with you. And I'm open to hearing other opinions. It's just my opinion, but I don't want you to get hoodwinked into buying this game. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. We'll see. But Sonic Frontiers, it still sucks. Thanks again. Switch Force out. I think this video shows more than anything else that clickbait is still king on all social medias, especially YouTube, because wow, what an obnoxious video. <laughs> um, this was bad. This was really bad. The points were vague, unsubstantiated, and so reduced at points that they didn't even line up with the original source material. I would have agreed with you more if, like, as you were talking about Sonic only drawing circles around enemies, you had, like, 10 different clips of Sonic drawing circles around an enemy. But I get the feeling you probably didn't want to put in the effort, which probably says more about you than it does the game itself. <laughs> so, um, yeah, to kind of fix your conclusion, Sonic Frontiers might still suck. We don't really know yet, but there's still quite a lot to be optimistic about. You're just kind of a dick. All right, catch you later.